So this is going to be a seed sowing video to show you what we do in the late autumn when we sow our own seed. This is a new type of seed that I've not used before. This is Calicarpa. It's a Japanese plant. So let's give it a go. You will never know. Beautiful little seeds. So that's what I do. Of course, I'll fire a candle. If I don't collect it, the birds come and eat it. I know I let the birds take some, but I can't let them take all. So I usually sow all these seeds, but I'm just going to show you as an example how we go about sowing these seeds. So they're just for the purpose of the video. Okay, I know what is what, so that is number two. Let's go to some of the crab apples and see what we have. You may have seen these crab apples are loaded with fruit, but I've got other plants as well where a lot of the fruit are there. And of course, look at it, they are so plentiful that they're falling on the floor. Look at all these lovely fruit. So rather than let them go to waste, every single fruit has about five seeds or more. So nothing is wasted. In fact, we sell the fruit as it is. You can let the fruit rot as well. And look at it. Look at all these fruit. So many. That's just crab apple. Let's go and find some other seeds. So, as I said, there are so many different types of crabs. They're all different. Like this, I think, is the Siberian crab with small fruit. So, it might be worth trying some of these. I know as amateurs, if you sow these, you have so many that you can give them to your friends. So that's another branch, and of course, these Japanese wasam, look at this. Look at the fruit, they're so beautiful. Absolutely divine. <laughs> Quite different from the English hawthorn. These are Japanese hawthorn. I better not confuse it because from a distance, as I said, these are all part of the rosaceae family, that means the rose family. And they all look like crab apples because um, Cotoniaster, the hawthorn, crab apples all belong to the same family. And of course, this even is a rosaceae. These are Chinese quince with the lovely fruit. Look at these lovely, lovely fruit. The Japanese slice pieces of it and inf infuse it in water and makes a beautiful tea. But they're not the soft variety which grows in Eastern Europe. Those are like pears, but these are a bit tough. So let's see what other fruit I can collect. So I'm here with this pink wisteria. So you can see the wisteria, the leaves have fallen. And the pink wisterias always have a lot of these viable seeds from the pots. So I like to collect these seeds because it's a very rare plant. Pink wisteria is exceedingly rare. So I will go and see how viable the seeds are. Okay. Now that I've cut it off, I will go back into the greenhouse and show you what I do next. Now, what have I got here? This is a Sabina juniper. And like all junipers, these are the beautiful juniper berries. And they are so plentiful. They almost look like blueberries. Beautiful, beautiful fruit. Rather than cut the foliage, I will just pluck it off. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of these juniper berries hundreds of them and of course these are ripe now so the seed if you crush it these berries if you crush I'll show you there's seed inside it and of course you have to pluck it when they are ripe if you come in close with the camera you see there are some berries which are still green those are not ripe so there's no point picking those only pick the ripe dark purple ones so these are sabina juniper berries the needle juniper juniper rigida that also has beautiful 
uh, berries and they germinate very easily from seed as well. The Chinese juniper, the uh, Kisu and Itoigawas also have berries. This is an ordinary, this is a Kisu, look at it. Even the Chinese junipers have seeds, look. So these berries can be sown and you get another plant. So there's such a wealth of material that you can use for propagating. And I know that a lot of people are not bothered or can't be bothered sowing plants from seed because it takes so long. But if you're skillful at sowing seeds, you get very quick results. So let's go and show you how we sow these seeds. You must be wondering why I brought you into this quarantine tunnel. This is what we did a couple of weeks ago. And we've sowed lots of seeds, acorns, crab apples, and this is what we do. You see this one crab apple here. And you see we put that volcanic pumice to cover it. And we will expose it to the frost. And hopefully they will all germinate. So we'll follow the progress of this. So this is how we deal with it so that the squirrels and the mice don't steal the seeds. I don't think people can get sheets of glass anymore. Glass is quite dangerous. But we used to use glass to cover them, but now we just use the polycarbonate. So just in space of a few minutes, I've collected so many different types of seed. I've got the Chinese quince here. These are proper plants from Japan. So they have these very unusual fruit. Japanese hawthorn. This is a type of Siberian crab. These are the ordinary crab apple, the Malus haliana. Pyracantha, Calicarpa, and this is Sabina juniper berries. And I could have collected many, many more. A lot of my friends think I'm crazy because as a commercial nursery, I shouldn't be fiddling around trying to grow things from seed. But I like doing it because it's part of the learning process and to understand <laughs> where my customers are coming from. They all love growing things from seed. So I have to experiment with it to see what the problems are and test the things for myself. So how do I go about sowing the seeds? Let's take them one at a time. So this is Chinese quince. As I told you earlier, you can slice it like this and infuse it in water. It makes a lovely drink. But for our purposes, we are going to extract the seeds a pretty tough fruit. Look at that. So if you come close, you see. Now, these fruit have fallen off, so I'm not sure how viable they are, but I will give it a go. Normally, these seeds should turn dark brown or black. But I will try some to see if they germinate, because if they germinate, then I know for next time that I can use seeds which are like this and that they will germinate. But I have a feeling they should be more uh, a darker color than this, like a dark brown. So if you cut it open, you see there's so many seeds in there. So that's just a few seeds of the Chinese quince. I can vouch for it because we have sown these in the past and we have a lot of success. In fact, the seedlings that grow, it's in such great demand that I can't meet the demand of all my customers. They all want the Chinese quince from seed. Okay, so that is the Chinese quince from seed. So let's sow these first. You can use any type of pot. You can use ordinary plastic bonsai pots. You can use ordinary flower pots. You can use seed trays. But I'm going to use these Japanese clay training pots because they're nice and heavy and dense. And also because they have large holes, which means you get very good drainage. You don't want the seeds to be standing in water because if a pot doesn't drain, it will be waterlogged and the seeds could rot. So the compost I use, I can take you to 
uh, potting area and show you if you follow me here. Many people have asked what compost do I use for seed sowing? So hopefully this will answer most of your questions. This is our standard bonsai compost. It's quite expensive because it has akadama, Japanese volcanic grit, pine bark, all sorts of things in it. You can certainly use this. There's nothing wrong with using it, except that it's expensive. You can also use a good John Innes number two or number three. And this one is made specially for us. And it consists of pine bark, very fine pine bark. And it has fine sand mixed in it. So this is the two types of compost I can use. Some people can even use akadama if you wish. You see all these bags of akadama, except that akadama is a very expensive soil. It comes all the way from Japan. So I would recommend it. If you feel generous and feel rich, you can use that for sowing seeds, but I don't think it's necessary. So fill the pot to about three quarters full. And with these Chinese quince seeds, there's no need to space the seeds out. Just scatter them. Once they germinate, we will then prick them out. That means we will separate it when they germinate. Now to cover the seeds, you can either use the same compost again, but I prefer to use a heavier medium, which is sharp sand. So if you sprinkle sharp sand on it, this will really keep it down, weight it down. So that's how we saw it. So don't forget the labels. If you have a few pots, three or four, you don't have to write it. But for us, where we have hundreds and hundreds of seed trays, we have to identify which is which. And today's date is the 28th October 2022. That's the date when they were put in. So that is it. And then I'll leave it in the open, perhaps covered with a sheet of glass. So that is that one done. Uh, let's go to the crab apple because a lot of you will have bought the crab apples from us. So these are the crab apples. Again, you slice the fruit in half. The seeds are pretty small, mind you. I've never counted how many there are because different varieties have different quantities of seed. So that's a viable seed. So that's one. I think they have about five seeds. That's two, very small seed. Or relatively small. It's not like poppy seed. If you've sown poppy seed, that's almost like powder. Although I'm extracting the seed like this, you can also just put the fruit directly into the soil. And because you put it in the soil, during the winter, the fruit will rot away, the fleshy part rots away, leaving the seed touching the soil. And that will also germinate. But by extracting the seeds, you get faster germination. No, I cut one seed in half, so that's no good. So you've got two, four, six, seven. So you, I reckon you get between five and 10 seeds in there. So that is the amount of seed you get from one fruit, just one fruit. As I said, there's so many different varieties of crab apples. Some are yellow, some are large red. And among the red ones, there are different shades of red. They're all different with different names. So that's the idea, you see, you extract the seeds. Take your time to extract it.
Okay. So, those are the seeds. I'm just putting them in there. And for good measure, I'm also going to put a couple of fruit in there and let this rot and see what happens to that. And again, I will put sharp sand over it to weight it down. And I'm going to leave it out throughout the winter to stratify. With crab apples, it's quite different from other types of seed. I used to find that if I put it on the kitchen windowsill, the warmth of the kitchen will germinate these seeds in about four weeks, three or four weeks. So if you have a warm kitchen, you can try that. And by Christmas, you can get seedlings which are about one or two inches tall. So this is a crab apple. So crab apple is today's day, 28th October, 22. So that is that done. So the next lot of seeds are these Japanese hawthorn. So again, Japanese hawthorn. Let's see. I've never sown Japanese hawthorn before. Now the seed is very, very soft. It almost feels like a soft apple. I don't even have to cut it. So that Japanese hawthorn, believe it or not, it's only got one seed in there. One seed per fruit. Again, one seed per fruit. But you can also, as I said, if you are lazy, you can just put the entire fruit in there and that should also work. So you don't always have to open the fruit out. So that is Japanese hawthorn for you. Again, I cover with sand and I will label this. Right, the next one to try, the juniper berries are very easy. You don't even have to open the seeds. You can if you wish. I'll just show you. If you come close, you see that each of these berries has about four or five seeds. They're really hard pips and they have a lovely smell, typical juniper berry. But with juniper berries, I don't even bother opening it up. I just put a whole batch of seeds here and when they germinate, I then separate it. I can assure you that junipers grow very easy from these juniper berries. So this is Sabina juniper. Not many more seeds. Now, with wisteria, I usually wait till March to sow it, but because I'm in the middle of the seed sowing process, let me try doing it in the autumn. I've never tried the autumn sowing, but it should work. See, this only got one seed. I spoiled that one. I sliced the seed and mess spoiled it. You see how fleshy they are. Okay, look at that. That's got two very plump seeds. So these are the wisteria seeds. If you stay here, I will just show you some seed pods from the past. These are seed pods that I collected in March of this year, but I didn't have the time to sow them. So they curl up like this, 
But you need to pick the seeds which are very plump. If they're not plump, then they're not probably viable. But we can still try them. So again, with these, you can use seed trays. And if you don't have a seed tray, you can just use a ordinary bonsai pot. Again, the same procedure, put it in, and that's what you do. And once you've done them all, we put it outside for the frost to work on. You can cover it with a sheet of glass or put a plastic bag around it, and then just wait for it to stratify. That means alternate freezing and thawing will wake the seeds up and you will get lots of little plants coming up next year. Uh, the crab apple, as I told you, I may take into my kitchen and give it a try to see how fast they germinate because I know from the past that they've done it. I didn't get around to sowing this, I will. Now let me show you some other seeds. Look at these prolific seeds. This is not a Japanese maple, but this is the American maple, which is Asa Campbelli. And when they are just about to ripen, they're beautiful red color, but they've turned brown now. So these are the ideal conditions of seed to sow. So again, do the same thing. Put it in a seed tray, cover it with sand, and they should come up. The other seeds which you may not have seen are these Japanese white beech, because we have two very large Japanese white beech trees. This is Japanese white beech seeds. So we will sow these as well. So just same process, put it in compost, cover it with sand, and they should all germinate. So there you go. I hope you've followed this. And when the seeds come up, I'll do a follow-up video to show you the progress of these seeds. While you're here, let me just show you a seed tray that I sowed last year. Stay there. Just to show you that I'm not cheating. These are wisteria plants. They were sown, not this year, but the previous year in 2021. So these are two year old plants. Look at them, see how strong they are. Two year old plants. Look at that for a two year old wisteria. Two years old. This also two years old, some are bigger than others. So I'm gonna pot them on. And then this seed tray, you must be wondering, it's not grass, it's cotoneasters. I just sowed handfuls and handfuls of these cotoneaster seedlings and look at that. These are all cotoneaster seedlings. I think I may wait till the spring to pick them out. So each of these will become individual plants. And I dare say there must be about two or 300 little seedlings in there. And just to give you an idea as to what each plant looks like. I can pull it out and show you. They're all very sturdy. Look at it. This is one plant, one year old. There you go. So sowing from seed is quite easy and very successful. All right. 